This is Perio Lecture, Chapter 6, Part 2. The Formation and Structure of Dental Plaque Biofilms The pattern of dental plaque biofilm development can be divided into five phases. One is the formation of the acquired pellicle. Two is the attachment of early bacterial colonizers. Three is the co-aggregation of additional bacterial colonizers. Four, formation of an extracellular slime layer and microcolony formation. And phase five is a mature biofilm characterized by the bacterial microcolonies that form complex groups with a primitive communication system and fluid channels. Within minutes after cleaning the tooth surface, a film forms over the tooth. This film, the acquired pellicle, is composed of a variety of salivary glycoproteins and antibodies. Its purpose is to protect the enamel from acids. It also, however, alters the charge and energy of the tooth surface, facilitating bacterial adhesion to the tooth surface. To understand the role of acquired pellicle in plaque biofilm formation, it is helpful to think of the pellicle as double-sided adhesive tape. The tape adheres to the tooth surface on one side and provides a sticky surface on the other side that aids bacteria in attaching to the tooth surface. Within a few hours after pellicle formation, bacteria begin to attach to the surface. Some bacteria have hair-like attachment structures that enable them to attach rapidly upon contact. These hair-like structures are called fimbria. Bacteria attached to the tooth produce substances that stimulate other free-floating bacteria to join the community. The act of attaching to the tooth surface stimulates the bacteria to excrete a slimy, glue-like substance called the extracellular slime layer. The slime layer helps to anchor the bacteria to the tooth and provides protection for the attached bacteria. In phase 4b, the bacteria proliferate and begin to grow away from the tooth surface. Bacterial blooms are periods when specific species or groups of species grow at rapidly accelerated rates. In phase 5, the bacteria cluster to form mushroomed-shaped colonies that attach to the tooth surface at a narrow base. The microcolonies are complex collections of different bacteria linked to one another. The bacteria in a biofilm are not distributed evenly. Each microcolony is a tiny, independent community containing thousands of compatible bacteria. Different microcolonies may contain different combinations of bacterial species. In this image you can see the structure of plaque biofilm. The complex structure of the biofilm includes clusters of bacterial microcolonies, streamers, and fluid channels. GCF stands for gingival cravicular fluid. Each microcolony has its own unique environment. Differences include oxygen concentration, pH, and temperature within the microcolonies. Each bacterial species prefers a certain environment within the biofilm. This bacterial diversity helps to ensure the survival of the plaque biofilm in widely varying oral conditions. If the plaque biofilm only had one species of bacteria, it is much more likely that a toxic agent or condition could destroy the biofilm. 
The extracellular slime layer is a dense protective barrier that surrounds the bacterial microcolonies and acts like a shield, protecting the bacteria from antibiotics, antimicrobials, and the body's immune system. Fluid forces influence the shape of the biofilm and result in the development of extensions from the main body of the biofilm. These extensions can break free and be swallowed, expectorated, or form new biofilm colonies in other areas of the mouth. Fluid forces can also result in cell-to-cell -cell collisions of the bacteria within the biofilm. Collisions lead to a more rapid spread of genes among the bacteria. This continuous exchange of genetic information among bacteria means that the bacteria are constantly evolving. Fluid channels penetrate the extracellular slime layer. They bring nutrients and oxygen to the bacteria. They carry bacterial waste products away. Included in the fluids is everything from saliva to any beverages that the person consumed. Direct cell-to-cell -cell interaction occurs among the bacteria in the biofilm. The bacteria use chemical signals to communicate with each other. This communication also results in the transfer of genes among bacteria. The bacteria within the biofilm produce hundreds of proteins that free-floating bacteria do not. Some of these proteins are signaling proteins that trigger events such as adhesion of additional bacteria and formation of the extracellular slime layer that surrounds the bacteria. To recap, the phases of biofilm formation are film coating or pellicle forms over the tooth surface. Initial bacteria attach to the pellicle. New bacteria join the initial bacterial colonizers. Extracellular slime layer forms. Mushroom-shaped microcolonies form. Bacteria in biofilm cluster together to form mushroom-shaped colonies. A dense, protective extracellular slime layer surrounds the bacterial microcolonies. Fluid forces of the saliva influence the shape of the biofilm and result in cell-to-cell -cell collisions of bacteria within the biofilm. Fluid channels penetrate the extracellular slime layer. Direct cell-to-cell -cell communication occurs among bacteria. Bacteria produce signaling proteins that trigger adhesion of additional bacteria and formation of extracellular slime layer. Layers and layers of bacteria. A mature biofilm does not consist of only one species of bacteria. The biofilm develops by stacking one bacterial species on top of another. Coaggregation is the cell-to-cell -cell adherence of one oral bacterium to another. Coaggregation is not random. Each bacterial strain only has a limited set of bacteria to which they are able to adhere. The ability to adhere and coaggregate is important in the development of the bacterial biofilm. See figure 6.13 on page 110 for a more thorough explanation of this image. The first bacteria to colonize the tooth surface are non-pathogenic. The ability of early colonizers to attach to the tooth surface lays the foundation for the growth of the biofilm. Periodontal pathogens are unable to colonize the biofilm until the non-pathogenic species are attached. Periodontal pathogens remain freely floating in the mouth until the early colonizers attach to the tooth. The early colonizers send signals to the pathogens when conditions are favorable for the pathogenic species to join the biofilm. 
Free-floating bacteria cannot join the biofilm until the conditions are favorable. Succession of bacteria is comparable to elementary school students who are told to line up alphabetically by their last names. Students whose last names start with O cannot get in line until all those with last names starting with M and N are in line. Intermediate and late bacterial colonizers cannot join the biofilm until the early colonizers are in place on the tooth surface. Many streptococcal species have the ability to attach to the tooth pellicle and to each other. Other early colonizers cannot attach to the pellicle, but have the ability to co-aggregate with the streptococcal species. Like the early colonizers, the intermediate and late bacterial colonizers must join the biofilm in the proper sequence. Many of the periodontal pathogens are late colonizers of the biofilm. The sequence is, early colonizers adhere to the pellicle, Intermediate colonizers coaggregate with the early colonizers. Late colonizers coaggregate with the intermediate colonizers. Free floating periodontal pathogens cannot cause disease. Periodontal pathogens cannot colonize the biofilm until the non pathogenic early colonizers attach to the tooth. If the biofilm is disrupted daily by self-care, the biofilm will always be reforming. Every time the biofilm is disrupted, the process must start all over again with the early colonizers, which are non-pathogenic. Early colonizers include gram-positive bacterium such as Actinomyces viscosus or Streptococcus sanguis. The bacteria then begin to multiply. Gram-negative bacteria join in, which includes Fusobacterium nucleatum and Prevotella intermedia. Gram-negative bacteria colonize, such as Porphyromonas gingivalis and Capnocytophagia gingivalis. The organization of bacteria within a biofilm is not random. There are specific association among bacterial species. Sokransky grouped microorganisms into complexes and assigned each complex a color. Color assignments are somewhat like the color designations for the Homeland Security Terror Alert status in the United States. In the Terror Alert chart, green is low risk, while a red color is high risk. Colors are assigned based on the association with health or disease. Yellow and green complexes are early colonizers that are believed to be compatible with gingival health. The orange and red complexes are thought to be major etiologic agents of periodontal disease. See figure 6.15 on page 112 in your textbook for more information on this image. The ability to adhere and coaggregate is important in the development of the bacterial biofilm. The first bacteria to colonize are non-pathogenic. The ability of early colonizers to attach to the tooth surface lays the foundation for the growth of the biofilm. Periodontal pathogens are unable to colonize the biofilm until the non-pathogenic species are attached. This concludes Perio Lecture 6, Part 2.